Hey everybody and welcome to another GPower 3.1 tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to talk about ANOVA repeated measures. Now there are three repeated measures, uh, three different effect size a priori calculations. I would suggest that if you are doing a repeat, if you are planning to do a repeated measures ANOVA as your analysis for uh, your study, is to only use one of these and find the smallest effect because that's the idea. Or at least maybe do if you have a mixed model, you are going to um, find the between factors or within factors, whichever one's the smallest one, or you do both. Um, and then this last one is the within between interaction. So we'll go through all three of these in this video. So first things first, imagine if I have a repeated measures ANOVA and um, I have a between subjects factor. Uh, and so if you are using SPSS, Jamovi, JASP, uh, Stata, whatever, uh, you'll notice that um, when you do a repeated measures ANOVA, you'll have the within subjects effects table, and then you have a between subject effects table. Now, if it's only a one way repeated measures ANOVA, then you won't have any between factors. And so in that case, you wouldn't use this one. You would only use this within factors. And we'll get to that one. So we'll just do these in order. Um, but let's say you have a mixed model, so at least one between subjects factor and at least one within subjects factor. And in which case, you would then um, jump into possibly using the within between interaction. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to talk about these one at a time. And you can skip to the one that you um, find most uh, suitable for your particular a priori sample size calculation with respect to uh, with respect to repeated measures. So let's do between, between factors first. So I'll click away from that. Again, we're in the F test family here. So this is ANOVA repeated measures between factors. Okay. And so we're going to calculate sample size knowing all of these. Again, we are using Cohen's F. And again, if you just leave the hoverer here, this should pop up with the... It should pop up with the... I guess it doesn't. Okay, maybe I'm wrong on that one. Uh... The tooltip does not exist for ANOVA repeated measures. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so uh, a, a few things have changed here. Uh, the first three rows have not, um, according to the previous ANOVA episodes of this tutorial series. Here we have number of groups. That has carried over because, again, this is between factors. Um, number of measurements. So this is the within subjects number of measurements. And then correlation among um, repeated measures. So how correlated are those repeated measures? So how correlated are the number of measurements? So... We're going to jump into those in just a second, but first let's handle effect size since I like to go down the list here. So effect size. This is the between subjects I, um, effect size calculation that you get from the omnibus wet one way. So in the previous video uh, in this tutorial series, I sort of went through all of these things. So you can get the effect size from your means, which means that you'll grab number of groups and then the standard deviation from each of those groups, or you'll put them in here and um, it'll calculate it if you hit effects. Or you can grab it from variance, and this variance is just like what um, you've seen in the other ANOVA videos where you either explain it by um, the special one special effect, the variance from one special effect, or the variance within the groups, or your error variance. In this case, this would be the repeated measures within group variance, or your smallest direct partial eta squared. Okay, so partial eta squared of 0.5 is gigantic. Let's do 0.03, and we're going to hit calculate there. So um, we are going to calculate and transfer to main window, close effect drawer. I, I'm choosing different ones in various in these various uh, episodes because I want to show you how um, you know, different effect sizes do change the total sample size calculation when um, alpha and one minus beta are the same. You can go and compare video to video. All right, so we are going to use our standard 0.05 as alpha and 0 0.80 as our standard power level. The number of groups that we're going to have for this between subjects factors is we're just going to leave it at two, and we're going to say that the measurements in the repeated measures um, part of the model is going to be two. So this would be a two by two mixed model ANOVA. And the correlation among the repeated measures, so these two measurements uh, of 0.5, we're just going to leave that as 0.5. The default there is fine. If you have the, the uh, actual value for this, put it in there because it could be more or less than 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is a pretty strong correlation in social science. So we will leave it as such. Okay, so we have all those parameters inputted. We are going to go over here and click on calculate. And uh, here we go. We have a total sample size required of 194. And um, we have a critical F of about 3.89 or 3.9. So a little bit higher of an F needed in this case um, for the smallest effect. Um, not a ton of people. You would divide this number by two because that's how many groups we have. And then each of those people would be measured twice on some other independent variable. So that is 194 divided by two. So whatever that is <laughs> divided by two. I'm not going to do math. Uh, so I'm recording in the morning, so I'm not going to do math right now. But that is how you do uh, the repeated measures between factors. So let's move on to the within factors. If we're only doing within factors variables, so maybe a one-way repeated measures um, ANOVA. Okay. Uh, and so we're not going to be uh, considering 
We're not going to be considering anything about between subject factors. Even though we're putting in number of groups, um, really it's going to be based on number of measurements. And um, you can see everything is essentially the same. But now we have a non-sphericity correction epsilon value here that we're going to put in, uh, that, that we would have to put in to, to, uh, to change how these two measurements and correlation among repeated measures, uh, if they're non-spherical or non-sphericitous. Oh, I hope I made a new word there. <laughs> now, for this one, within factors, the only way we can calculate uh, effect size uh, Cohen's F here is either by doing it from directly from variances, so what the special effect uh, is versus the variance within groups, again, the variance, uh, error variance there, or we can do um, partial eta squared here. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I've run this one into the ground, so I'm going to uh, close the drawer because we're not going to use that. We're just going to go ahead and put in um, 0.15, halfway between a, a small and medium effect size, thereabouts. Maybe not halfway, that would be probably 0.18, closer to a smaller effect size. We're going to leave alpha as 0.05, and power is going to be 0.8, as we have been doing. The number of groups here, uh, I'm going to change to 1, because we are doing a one-way ANOVA of just repeated measures, and they will be measured three times, okay? Because if it was two times, then we would, uh, then we would just do a dependent samples or paired samples t-test. Correlation among rep um, repeated measures, I'm going to leave that as 0.5, and then the non-sphericity correction by default is left at 1, and we are going to leave that as 1. Um, it would be a good idea to leave that as 1 if you are assuming that you will have sphericity, because here I have three groups. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Calculate, and here we have total sample size needed is 73. But the denominator degrees of freedom is going to be 144 because I'm measuring everyone three times. Okay. So <clears throat> we have two over 144, 73 on our sample size. Wonderful. That's not too bad. Now see what happens when I increase this to 0.25. What will happen to that? Well, it turns out I only need 28. That's wonderful. But if I wanted to find a much smaller effect, I will need that much more people, 163. That's a, that's a lot. But in any case, that's how you would calculate your a priori sample size for a one way within factors ANOVA. Now, if this was a, if the within factors um, effect was the smallest, but we were, oops, that's not what, I, not what I wanted to do. I wanted, oh, we're going to leave it there. But we were doing a two by three mixed model. So number of groups is now two. Number of measurements in my within subject factor is three. So a two by three mixed model. Now, what happens when I hit calculate here? We still only need 164 because we are looking for the smallest effect of repeated measures of this, of the repeated measures. So if we're going to leave that at point one, changing the amount of groups. Now, it doesn't matter because that's where we're searching for the smallest effect within factors. So the total sample size is now just 164, but now I'm going to have to divide that by two for um, each group, okay, to get the amount of people needed for each group too. So you can see that if I change this back to one, it's 163 to 324. If I change this back to two, if I change this to two, it's 164. So um, not a lot changes there. Um, we can see that our uh, critical F value doesn't really change either. And that is how you do repeated measures for within factors. So your within factors. Now, if I want to find the sample size needed for a within between interaction, like if that's my main goal for my analysis, well, let's just say that we're going to find a 0.15. We want to find a 0.15 effect. 0 0.80 is my power. Alpha is going to be 0 0.05 as always. So since this is a within between interaction, we are going to do, let's say this is a three Oh, yeah, let's say this is a three by four. So our between subjects factor is uh, an IV that has three levels and our within subject factor is going to have four different measurements. Correlation, again, we're just going to leave it at 0.5, but you would change that based on um, what the uh, within subjects factor, with the within subject factors correlations between those measurements. And then we're going to leave the non-sphericity correction as one because we're going to assume sphericity. And so let's calculate. And so what it appears here is that we only need 78 people with a critical F value of 0.21 to achieve 0.8 power. So that is total sample size of 78 divided by three measured four different times, okay? Six over, 20, six over 25 are degrees of freedom, okay? So that's actually pretty small for an interaction effect here, right? And so if I increase this to 0.3, which is an over, uh, which is a larger effect size than what we just did, you can see that now we only need 24 people. 24 people divided by three, which is, uh, you know, uh, what, eight? Eight people per group measured four different times? That's pretty good. But that, again, is an interaction effect size of 0.3. Interaction effect sizes don't tend to be this big, but again, if you are looking for the interaction, it's likely the smallest one that you're looking for or the most important one that you are looking for when doing this analysis. That is how you do repeated, measure, repeated measures, ANOVA, whether it's the between subject factor, the within subject factor, or the interaction between the 
between the two in G Power to do uh, an a priori sample size calculation. If you like this video, consider leaving a like. If you like this content, please consider subscribing for more of these kinds of tutorials. Thanks for watching. Bye.